Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 6th Kosher Boys Annual Class. My name is Avi Benjamin, I'll be your host. This class was sponsored by Shlomo Ben Ima Shalom, correct me if I'm wrong. Also for the memory of our dear friend, Amram Chaim Ben Yochevit, everybody who needs a full Shlema say to yourselves. This week's topic is Drugs Part 2, Behind the Scenes. I'd like for everybody to give a round of applause for my friend Daniel Niazza for last week's performance. Because what he did, not too many people do. And uh, we gotta be very grateful. Now today's topic is, behind the scenes. Everybody got problems. Some big, some small. But everybody has problems. Once again, this week's topic is behind the scenes. The reason I chose this topic is... Everybody got problems. A lot of people don't want to talk about their problems. Some people call it venting. That's what this class is, is a vent. This is me venting. But essentially everybody has problems. When I was in yeshiva, they used to give us small little phrases, little small little stories to live by. And I'll never forget this one. Who is strong? One who overcomes his yetahar. One who overcomes his uh, taiva. Meaning, you want to do something? If somebody's bothering you, you want to do something? You got to overcome it. That's a strong person. You have a desire, you want to do something? You want to do a drug? You want to do something wrong? You want to get into a fight with somebody? It takes a real strong person to overcome himself. Now I want to tell you one thing, now that the topic is behind the scenes, I noticed in the past couple of months that everything is from Hashem. And I tell this to you wholeheartedly, I'm not more religious than anybody in here, I promise. Just because I keep Shabbos and I put on tefill and I eat kosher doesn't make me religious. Me personally, I hate the word religious. I prefer the word God-fearing. I know many religious people that walk around with a kippah, but they don't know how to talk. I know many people who think they're religious and they did all the stuff that they were supposed to do in religion, but they're just horrible people inside. And you can feel it when you're next to these people. The objective is to be God-fearing. You can't fool God, you know why? He sees everything. Why? Because He's behind the scenes. That's what this class is about. Now, I can't sit here and lecture you guys all night. Why? Because I gave you guys all a pamphlet. On the back of this pamphlet, it has about five different substances, five different drugs. And before I start this class, I have any music, I think we should give the microphone to my dear friend, Mr. Daniel Niazza. Give a round of applause, please. Okay. Ladies, gentlemen. You guys have these pamphlets in your hands when he's going to be going through each and every topic. Please pay attention because the stories that he will be talking about, you're not going to be hearing anywhere. This is not opinions, this is experience. Meaning that people have been through this and this is real life stuff. Hopefully you're here and you never have to go through it because for a person to be able to express himself is very hard. So I ask for everybody to please be mature. I consider you guys adults because the substance on these papers are something that you wouldn't want to see in your darkest dreams. So please remain quiet. If you have any questions, please let us know. Danny, the floor is yours. Thank you, Avi. How's everybody doing tonight? Some of you may remember me from the last time. Uh, my name is Daniel Niazov, and uh, the topic is drugs. And uh, I think I'm going to talk about some drugs to you guys. Um, I'll tell you a little bit of my story about what happened to me and how I progressed into that lifestyle. Uh, I came from a good family. I grew up with uh, good friends that looked up to me. I had good people around me. By, by the age of 14, I started experimenting. And I started experimenting with some serious drugs. You know, it started out with the weed. It started out with drinking. Ecstasy. At 14 years old, I was just a little boy. Cocaine. I mean, everything you see on this pamphlet, I've done it all. Okay? Um, but at that moment, now mind this, I told you guys that I, I had friends. I was the guy that everybody wanted to be around with. 
that I wanted to party with. Everybody looked up to me. I was the man at that moment, or at least I knew I thought I was. Um, through my teenage years, I progressed into going to clubs, overnight clubs, 21-year-old clubs, even though I used a fake ID. That's when I started doing a massive amount of drugs. Recreationally, once, once a week, twice a week, I thought I had it together. Little did I know that I was on my way to, I was already on this path of destruction. I didn't know that at that time. Um, it took me a lot of years to progress. I didn't become a drug addict overnight, even though I had the actions of a drug addict before I started using every single day. By the age of 21, I was working, I was making money, but I was wasting more money on drugs than on anything else. By age 21, 22, I had a 500 hours a day habit. 500 hours, guys. And I was doing everything and anything to get those five, to get that 500 to get the next one. Now you gotta realize this, what I'm telling you, that I was so addicted to that lifestyle. I thought I was invincible, but I was a slave to these drugs. I became a slave to these drugs at the end of the day. No matter how tough I thought I was, no matter how smart, how strong I thought I was, at the end of the day, that was really weakness. At the end of the day, I gave myself into that lifestyle thinking I could handle it, but it handled me. I'm telling you guys, if you don't humble yourself from this age, life will humble you. It will make sure you will end up in a place where you don't want to be if you get on this path. I'm here to tell you guys what happened to me, and it doesn't have to happen to you. It's about decision making. Just like the decision I made to pick up the drugs, I made a decision to stop. That's where it all starts. Hashem could give you anything you want. I remember I was at a bad place around 23, 24. I started stealing a lot, right? And I was on my way to the store praying to God, please don't let me get caught. Please don't let me get caught. And this was a store where you're gonna get caught if you steal, but I didn't care. And I actually got away. So I'm saying to say that, that whatever you guys want, the decision that I made to go and steal, you know, God loves each and every one of us. So he said, okay, you don't want to get caught, but are you ready to handle the consequences? Are you ready to end up in jail? Are you ready to end up on the street, wasting every dollar you have on drugs. Now, a lot of people don't get a second chance. Just three days ago, three days ago, a friend of mine in Israel, a girl, she called me crying. Overdose of heroin. She died. She didn't get a chance like I did. You know, somebody told me this once. If you had to pick from being smart or wise, of course it's good to be both. And you should be. What would you pick? And I had to think about that for a little while. I would have picked I would have picked wise. Why? I'll tell you. Smart, you could open up a book, you could memorize stuff, you could get smart. Being wise is learning from others people from other, from other people's experience. What happened to them and where they ended up from the decision making that they made. You want to become a millionaire? Surround yourself around millionaires. Ask them how they did it. You want to know why they're a drug addict? Why they're on the street? Ask them what kind of decisions they made at the end of the day. Why they came out there and what they're doing. Ask them. You got to surround yourself with winners and I will guarantee you, you guys will be a winner. Surround yourself around drugs and negativity 
And I guarantee you, you might not even get a second chance. Or you might, but you don't want to go through what I went through. I had to literally start over. Imagine, at 32 years old, starting over, just like a little baby. I had to learn how to think. I had to learn how to move. I had to start showing myself love. I had to learn how to love myself. Because by age 25, I was done. I'm gonna be real with you guys. I'm, I'm not afraid to say this. Because I really, I really want all of you to understand that this is not a joke. Heroin was my king. Do you understand what I'm telling you? I was a slave to it. Imagine, and now, and again, I'm telling you this again. I was a kid that everybody looked up to. I thought I knew it all. And I kept wondering, as older as I got, why has God kept giving me, keep, kept giving me chances? Why am I not dying? Because at the end of the day, I really wanted to, to die. I didn't want to live like this. Nobody wants to. So I think I'm here for a real reason. And I needed to change. And if I could get through one of you at least, for you not to pick up that first hit of weed, that first hit of crack, that ecstasy, that first pill of ecstasy, that'll be the best decision you ever made. I know today you, you guys might think it's cool to smoke a little bit of weed, you know, to go to the club or whatever it is. To me today, that's weakness. Abby was talking about how you overcome. Overcome. You gotta put the effort in to live the right way. You gotta put the effort in because I'm telling you, it's, it's real out there. Drugs will eat you alive. They have ate me alive a few times and spit me back out. I did four, I counted it the other day, I did four years, close to four years, all together in jail. In and out, in and out, in and out. It's not a joke. You know what I'm saying? It's not a joke. And like I said, your first one could be your last. So why take that risk? Why take that chance? When you have all the possibilities at your hands. Dreams, you gotta have dreams. You gotta have goals in life. Especially at this age that you guys are right now. Everything that you wanna do in life, you gotta make it happen right now. Dreams do come true. But dreams without goals are just goals. You gotta execute those goals the correct way. You gotta show God, your family, what you're really made of. Surround yourself with winners and I guarantee you, you will be a winner. I guarantee you. Um, Abby, thank you for calling me again. I really do appreciate it. I hope everybody got something or learned something from it. And one more thing, um, if parents, you know, any parents that are listening, if they need any kind of help, I'm willing to help however I can. Again, Abby, I thank you for calling me out again. I think I'm more thankful than you are. <laughs> and, uh, you know, spread the love. Be nice to people. That's real toughness. Be good to people. Do something with your life. Stay in school. I'm gonna say something, one more thing before I go. Um, I have this friend. And uh, I used to, when I used to be a teenager, like around 16, 17 years old, we used to, um, me and a couple other guys, we used to go up to his window. We used to call him outside all the time. Come outside, let's smoke some weed, let's do this, let's do that. And he used to be like, no, I'm studying. You know, I gotta do my homework, this and that. And we used to look at him like, he's not cool. We're cool, I'm cool. I'm outside smoking weed. 10 years down the line, he's living in a $3 million house. At the same time, I'm living in an eight foot, eight by 10 foot cell, courtesy of the government. You understand what I'm telling you? Who came out cool at the end? Me or him? 
right? So make the right decisions, make the right choices in life. This is the age that you gotta do it right now because it's only gonna get harder. Thank you guys. Guys, give a round of applause, Shane. I appreciate you. Once again, I don't even know how to thank Danny because I don't think you understand for what it takes for a person with a past like that to come over here. But the fact that this many people came and a lot of people, a lot of his friends came to support, it shows how strong Danny is going to be after this. Now, since this is a class of chizuk, to be able to strengthen oneself, there's certain stuff that helped me as a kid to be able to stay off the street. A lot of my friends know me. I really didn't touch those type of drugs. I may have smoked weed or smoked a cigarette, had a couple of drinks, but... I was too energetic to take any type of drugs like that. I would have a heart attack and die because I was already born hyperactive. You give me one of those things, I'm going to die on the spot. I think it's important, and I said this last time, I think it's important for people to, as bad as this sounds, to be able to hear stories as Danny's. To be able to, to, to unfortunately, God forbid for you guys to attend these places, to be able to go to funerals. Chas v'shalom. Why? Because you, you really wake up. You know, we have a concept, Baharian Jews, we do something called a Yushro, a memorial. Seven days, 30 days, a whole year. What do we do at this Yushro? What happens? We come here to remember some guy that passed away. He doesn't need it. He's already in Ganeda, wherever he's at. He doesn't need it. We come there for what reason? To eat, to drink, to say Lachayim? No, we come there so we can hear one or two words like Danny said. Nobody expects to change hundreds of people. It's impossible. It's frankly impossible to do that. One person you change, you save the world. You know, they say if you make a child, it's as if you made 613 mitzvot. How? How? Because you just made a living, breathing mitzvah machine. I tell people really simple. I'm not a person to like scare you, say, oh, heaven or hell. You ever seen movies, they have an angel on one side and the devil on the other side, and you always tell them, hey, do it, do it, do it. No, you can't do this, it's not nice. It should be just like that. That's what the Yetzirah and the Yetzirah told us. Your subconscious tells you, you know when you're doing wrong, when you're about to do something wrong, you feel it, you start to sweat. You're like, yo, dude, I don't do this. Let me tell you something, my mom's here, you know, I always shy to tell this to my mom, but my mom knew, I used to tell her, after the club, I used to come tell her, I was with this guy, we did this, I saw that, I saw him doing I used to tell my mom that my mom. Why? He's my friend. And that's why we're close right now. One time I was in a car. I used to be an employee at a place called Leonard's. I'm sure many people over here know what that is. Guys in the back know, the older guys. So I'm working in Leonard's, and it was a real free-for-all. We were waiters, and uh, we used to get paid $60 to, to work the whole shift. And at the end of the night, the guys would go to a club. Or we'd go to Millennium to play pool or whatever it was. I remember I'm in the car, and I'll be honest with you, I was extremely paranoid. All the time, pounding like, hey, 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 don't smoke a cigarette. We get stopped. Don't, 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 don't roll that. Don't smoke this. And I always felt pounding because I was uncomfortable in that state. And I'll tell you what it was, and it's the God on this truth. When the twin towers fell, I'll never forget. I was in second or third grade, and I saw one by one everybody's leaving the class. But I didn't know the twin towers fell. I'm like, wait a minute. How come everybody's mom is picking them up? Does my mom not love me? <laughs> That's what I thought. And then. The Twin Towers fell, we came home, it was a big catastrophe, and I remember the next year after that, I even remember my teacher's name, her name is Miss Stutz. No, her name, yeah, her name was Miss Stutz. Miss Delinsky or Miss Stutz. And I went from that day to Yeshiva, and I came to this Yeshiva, I'm not gonna say the name, and they said, oh, Avi, can you read Hebrew? No, no. So you have to go back to the third grade, I'm sorry. You have to learn how to read Hebrew. They gave me an olive bina. I was the tallest kid in the class. I came from a public school environment. I barely ate kosher. We did the holidays uh, traditional. And I went to that yeshiva. I was left back for the majority of my life. And I can tell you right now, in front of everybody, the Torah is here. I would go back to that yeshiva a thousand times and do it over again. I'll tell you why. Because in that seven to eight months where they put me on a probationary period, because I was a public school kid and I looked like I was troubled because they heard the word 108 Street. And in Russian, it's called Testoa Snoy. You know? Testoa Snoy. You know the gematria of 108 is Gehenna. I swear to you, you can look it up. The gematria for 108 Street is hell. The numerical value of 108 is hell. So, uh, back to the car. I get into the car. 
I remember one time I got stopped. stopped. I'll never forget this day in my life. Remember this. Remember. Be careful who you get in the car with. If you know some guy, he sells some stuff, or he's very hot boy, he's very hot anything, don't get in his car. If he likes to speed, don't get in his car. I know this seems like stuff we shouldn't be talking about. This is very dangerous stuff. So I got in his car and the police stopped us one time. And remember this, I'm telling you this is the truth. The person that's listening to this, he knows what I'm talking about. They stopped us. They told all of us to get out of the car. They sat us down on the curb. And they said, excuse me, can you open the trunk? My heart stopped. I'm like, what do you mean open the trunk? They told my friend to open the trunk. All of a sudden, they start taking out bags of pills. Weed was the least of his problems. And I'm sitting there, my heart's beating. I'm like, my mom finds out I'm going to jail. She's going to kill me. My mom's going to kill me. I thought I was so paranoid all the time. Why? Because it didn't feel right to me. And the only reason I had that feeling of that not feeling right, not because I was ethically or morally raised properly, it's because I had the yeshiva shabak shabak. It helped me so much, and I say it wholeheartedly. I remember Forest Hills was right behind us. So as soon as I used to come out of my school, all the guys over there, so I used to quickly hide my yarmulke, like, yo, what's up? What's up? Hey, you know, you know, I'm not gonna keep up, like, you know what I mean? Realistically, I'm telling you, you guys are shy to wear a keeper. Are you shy to wear a keeper? You know, people respect me 10 times more than that. I work in my barbershop, a majority of people see me. I used to wear titsis at work. I wear my yarmulke, and people respect you 10 times more. You know why? They see you're a man of value. You're not scared to. If you stand for nothing, you will fall for anything. Listen to what I said. If you stand for nothing, you will fall for anything. The Christians, they walk around on Ash Wednesday. They take ash, they put it on their foreheads, and they walk around the whole, the whole town. Muslim people, they slaughter goats in the middle of the year. They walk around with blood. They're proud of their religion. You, the Jewish people, both Jewish boys and girls should be able to walk around with pride. Why? Because Hashem runs the world. Hashem is behind the scenes. Before I start the next part that I wanted to speak about, this class is not too much Torah, it's morals. Why? Because I feel as if today's day a lot of people lack morals. Like you had to tell people before, hey, don't kill nobody, don't argue with nobody, don't do this. Today you have to say it, unfortunately. Like, hey, listen, be careful. Don't be... Today you have to say it because people forgot. We all think we're smart. Even I think I'm smart sometimes. I'm not. Every day I learn, there's a saying, the more the thing you think you know, the more you find out that you didn't know nothing. Listen to what I said. The more you think you know, the more you find out that you didn't know nothing. Now, as you know, this is a jam session, so we're going to have a performance track. I'm going to ask you whether you guys want hip-hop or Hebrew. Hip-hop. Hey. Hebrew hip-hop. Great. I like that. Okay. This song will be shot soon as a video, it's already recorded, but I'll do it live for you. It's called Just Believe. And you'll understand if you listen to the lyrics, you know some people that tell you don't listen to hip-hop music, and I agree with it. Listen to what I'm saying to you carefully. A lot of times hip-hop is poetry, but if you listen and dissect the lyrics, they can either subconsciously make you do the wrong thing or the right thing. They talk about Molly, talk about drugs. You're gonna talk about getting a job in the song? Are you going to talk about getting married in the song? Are you going to talk about respecting one another in the song? Or is it about we girls? Really, bro? Can we change the topic? I don't have a job. I can't even buy food. So this song is called Just Believe. Just Believe. No, 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 no. Growing up, I had to prove myself. I really tried hard not to lose myself. Didn't care about money, didn't need no wealth. I thought I had friends. Just to fool myself. Check it. Growing up, I had whatever I need. My mother to work hard just to feed my grief. But now I'm getting older and it's hard to see that everybody around me is about to leave me. Check it. Growing up, they used to use me. Looking for every opportunity up in the world to screw me. Scary thing is nobody really knew me. Only wanted was to smoke, drink, and watch a movie. Everybody got a fantasy. Some things that you can't achieve. I just want to help you break free. Yeah. I don't care about the minor things Cause I just wanna build a dynasty yeah. Break free yeah. Just believe in your dreams Close your eyes and you'll see Just believe in your dreams Close your eyes Everybody got a 
got a fantasy Some things that we can't achieve I just wanna help you break free yeah, yeah. I don't care about the minor things Cause I just wanna do the dynasty Shine on me Yo, but still I'm fighting till the day I die Even when I'm in the heaven where I'm close to God I'm close to God But I'm lacking faith inside, I can't deny Gotta keep my head up high, time goes by Realize everything is a lie, I need a sign God open up my eyes with no disguise Plus I'm putting down my pride, I feel divine Now I know my time to shine Everybody got a fantasy Some things that we can't achieve I just wanna help you break free yeah. I don't care about the minor things Cause I just wanna build a dynasty just believe in your dream Close your eyes and you'll see Just believe in your dream Close your eyes and you'll see You know, it's very hard for me to do this I have a lot on my mind be able to take care of this class is very crazy But I see so many people come So I couldn't help but dedicate it you know, you know, I see a lot of these rabbis talk, and I'm like, I would never want to take the position of a rabbi. He has to hold his phone. People call him, Rabbi, I have this problem. Rabbi, I have this problem. Who wants that problem? I'm not trying to be a rabbi. I'm trying to be a friend. I'm trying to be a person that you don't take an example from. You just take some advice from. Hopefully, it's not bad advice. Now, now, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. The next song that we will be performing, I have a special guest. I had a pleasure of meeting this guy before I got married. I married him to his family. His name is Jacob Sophia. Please give a round of applause to my friend Jacob Sophia. He goes by the name of Jay Sovereign. Give a round of applause for him, please. Now, before I, Jake, before I introduce Jacob, I want to tell you a little bit about Jacob. When I met Jacob, he was fairly young, but he always had an old soul. He was very, very... Very well spoken, very well mannered, came from a good home. And I met him, he came to my barbershop. And this is a true story, if I'm lying, he's here. He came to my barbershop, and uh, he was going to school across the street, and I was like really, really patriotic about people messing with Jewish people. If there was a fight outside and somebody's bothering us, I would come up and I'd just, you know, smack a few people, and you know, it'd be over. Because I didn't want nobody to pick up. Is that correct? That's correct. That's absolutely correct. So Jacob would come, would come, he would listen to music, and he started to write. To write. And he was, and he I'm was telling you, this guy is, this guy is one of the most deepest poets, poets that I know. I know. So I see him grow to the man that he is today. He went from not keeping Shabbos, not keeping kosher, to today, Baruch Hashem, keeping kosher, keeping Shabbos, round his horse for him. He makes wonderful music. He has thousands of people listening to him. And he made a beautiful song, and I really want you to listen to the lyrics. This is his beat, his lyrics, his poetry, and uh, it's something to be proud of. Jacob, the floor is yours. What's up, everybody? Kosher boys in the building. Yeah. Okay. 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 No, 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 no. Jacob's gonna have to walk around and perform because this is what he does. He does. I'm gonna interact with y'all. Jacob, trying to stay in front of the camera. I'm gonna oh, okay. Okay. This world got too many, got too many, got too many problems, problems. This world, this world got too many, got too many, got too many problems, problems. This world. Uh, yeah. What's going on in this world? It's like I can't even tell. Everything I want to do is gone. Fires raising from hell. We seem separate from each other. Once in the same, but nowadays, boy, won't even recognize his brother. So many other issues, more than kind of wrong. Address my nation, give them tissues, cause they feel that they've been wrong. Time moves on and fate moves along, but losses of the memory, twin towers were bombed. 9 11 was a tragedy. For me, it's so sad to see that it's taken as a parody. Had it, he had the audacity to fall in love, use the situation for. Its full capacity, then they move to another so rapidly. War, hunger, financial problems, and politics tearing up the world as we know that they blame it on the anonymous. No surprise, in a few years, the apocalypse saw this all coming right in my consciousness. I'm not speaking explicit, so take a second listen. We can all fix it, just make it our business. 
not economies, but not about technology. But look at your history, I won't accept apologies, cuts. This world got too many, got too many, got too many problems, problems. Too many problems. This world got too many, got too many, got too many problems, problems. This world. See, there's a digital divide between keyboards and human eyes. Unfortunately, people rather type than physically socialize. Remember a time not too long ago, I was going with the flow. I was too dumb to know. Questions like, should I hit the club? Should I try this drug? Making money for some villains, gangsters, and thugs. This is what we call America, violence and silence. And when you hear those sirens, can't expect no alliance. It's the truth of this world, can never trust nobody's word. They'll try to convince, you'll try to resist. All the while, causing suspense, they'll insist you get to you try to raise your defense, but yourself you can't distance. Now it's too late to dictate. Your fan is a witness, and the only way to negate this, you found freight on your back is to act really fast in a way you never thought you had to act. And let me tell you one thing: it's a fact that most people don't know what the future holds. Could be silver or gold. Hustle never stops, but then they get old. Life's a poker game, gotta know when to fold up. Not every hand dealt is gonna be golden. Fighting over missiles and pistols Over the diamonds and crystals Why can't we get along? This world got issues We still fighting over missiles and pistols Over the diamonds and crystals Why can't we get along? This world Give a round of applause for my man Jay Sauron. That's his brother. That's for sure. You should be proud of your brother. Uh, everybody, I want to tell you something quickly before I go. Let the music play. So, what this man right here does, what this man right here does to get all of you guys in one room, listening to one subject to one outcome to one goal all focused on one thing this is a very beautiful thing every one of you have to appreciate just the fact that you're here all right drugs are very serious problems in this world and i can tell you firsthand because i know people who have died from you know overdose too avi grew up with these people as well danny had the guts to come up here and share his story with all of you you know you guys have to take everything seriously Life is not a joke, you know, you play around, you could mess up, and that's it. There's no coming back. Once you dig yourself in a hole, it's hard to come out. So, just make the right decisions, everybody, all right? I have a little, I have two little brothers. I don't ever want to see them make the decisions that I made when I was in high school. Ever, 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 ever. And I'm sure a lot of you can relate, you guys have siblings. So, just keep your heads in the books. Do what's right, listen to your mom and dad. Don't do drugs. Yeah, listen to Avi. This guy got it. All righty. Now, before we do the last performance, we're gonna have two more performances. You know, I always ask a question, and I'm gonna ask it, but I ask for everybody to be wholeheartedly be honest. How many people over here keep Shabbat? Raise your hands. Ooh, goals. Turn the camera around. Leave your hands up. Everybody leave your hands up. So I can tell you like this, we're not in bad shape, that's for sure. We're halfway there. We're halfway there, that's what's up. Give yourselves a round of applause for that. It's important that I bring this up too, why? Because you never know who's behind the scenes. It's hard for people to go to the synagogue and keep Shabbat, why? Because they feel as if it's boring. So what is our next project in Kosher Boys and Kosher Girls? Now that we have a bunch of girls here, Baruch Hashem. We will be making an annual Shabbaton. With a concert, tons of food, you guys are going to have to come with us for two or three days. There'll be a lot of activity over there, so it's something to look forward to. I started keeping Shabbos six years ago. This is a funny story. I started keeping Shabbos six years ago, and I'll never forget. When I got married, I started keeping Shabbos. Um, I felt really weird in the synagogue because I felt like I can't read as good as everybody else. 
So I'm like, I got to sit in the back, and hopefully they don't call me to sing, or they don't ask me to do a prayer, because I don't know how to do this stuff right now. I don't want to go up there. I was extremely shy. But I got comfortable. I sat in the back. I got comfortable. I sat in the back of the synagogue. Frequently, I would uh, get closer and closer. I started remembering all the songs. And it was, it was recollecting a time where my father used to take me to shul. And I said this to you guys last week. It's important for you guys to go to shul. Even if you don't keep Shabbat. Attend the synagogue. Just walk in there. You guys, I know some people that don't go to shul at all. Unless somebody, God forbid, dies. Or there's like a bar mitzvah or a bris. They don't go. It's important for you guys to go. Like Danny said, you're going to be around winners, you're going to be a winner. A person is a product of his environment. That's what Maimonides said. He's Rambam. A person is a product of his environment. You put him around a bunch of drug dealers, he's going to be a drug dealer. You put him around a bunch of gentlemen, businessmen, that's what he's going to be. Now, I'm very thankful for my father, both in the heaven and here. So this is a song that's very famous in Russian, but I made it in Hebrew. Hopefully you guys like it. My man, man J.
again, thank you, I appreciate it. I hope you like that song, I wrote it myself. It belongs to somebody else, but made it in me. Thank God, oh man, it's the second time you asked me for it. Okay, so we're jamming. Great, great, so that's it. We're gonna have to make it happen. But first, I said this last week, whoever wasn't here, I'm gonna say it one more time. I have a guy named Arik over here. He's, he's visually impaired, but he does more mitzvot than I do, and I have, I have my vision. He's a real tzaddik. Danny, you probably know this gentleman. I watched him, and I said this last week, I watched him take his stick, walk home and back to the synagogue, find him a place and sit down. Do you understand what I'm saying? Every time I say it, I, I, I can't help but smile because it drives me nuts. So he requested a song called Good Vibes. Your wish is my command, my friend. One, one, one round of applause for Arag one more time for being a tzaddik. Let's do it. Let's do it. Once a round of applause for my man Arik. That was a special request. Now, we have this one last request and we're done with the class. So we'll do thank God. 
Let's do it. Let's do it. But that's the way I feel Don't lose who you want for temporary appeal Don't let it be too late when you see what life reveal Don't let it be too late when you find a God is real I This money tame you, never lose your faith, remember that God made you. Now here's a little story about me, and I'm a young Jewish brother from the NYC, and I'm a sure with you a story that you wouldn't believe. The other day I had a message from G-O-D saying, no. But that's the way I feel. Don't lose who you are for temporary appeal. Don't let it be too late when you see what life reveal. Don't let it be too late when you find a God as well. Thank you very much for coming to this class. It's the Coastal Boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do not leave. Come take this picture if you have any respect for me. I'm waiting for you. I'm alive and I thank God.